Hello, and welcome to Light to Run Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about my girlfriend's, no, my husband's killer girlfriend. My husband's killer girlfriend stars Cindy Busby, my girl, Avery Crane, Lane Edwards, Chelsea Reist, and Lucia Waters. Now, on the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no, thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Pour it up! Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back, because I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. Leanne Watts is a newly divorced working mother who needs an emergency babysitter for the weekend because she has to go out of town for work. Leah interviews potential nannies and is sold on the one wearing a terrible disguise. Leah has no time for paperwork, pays the nanny named Valerie in cash, and forgets her daughter's birthday. She hops in a cab and is off. A few days later, and no contact from Valerie or her daughter Emma, Leah begins to worry. She argues with her ex-husband Adam and rushes home to find her daughter has been locked in her room for days. Leah is questioned and arrested for child neglect. There is no evidence that Valerie ever existed, and Leah is gaslit AF. After being released on bail, Leah tracks down Adam and recognizes his new girlfriend, Kathy, who's a dental hygienist. A dental hygienist? And Valerie. Leah punches that bitch in the face. Twice. She also assaults a police officer. Put your hands behind you. Leah, no! Leah's lawyer is very unimpressed. Kathy and Adam have some sexy time. While they are distracted, Leah breaks into the house and looks for evidence to exonerate herself. Then she breaks into Kathy's house, signs for a package, and finds a room made up for Emma. Leah has a Mariah Carey breakdown. She pulls herself back together and blackmails a hunky hacker. Then, Leah impersonates a nurse to visit her daughter in the hospital, but is caught by a doctor. Leah runs out of there and directly into the detectives, who have been working on her case. Leah wrestles the gun from the detective and takes her hostage until Leah is over it and decides to run into the woods instead. Cue a chase scene here. Kevin has some evidence, but is reluctant to give it up to Leah. She screams at him. Leah then learns Kathy stole her current identity and is a psychopath slash child murderer with narcissistic tendencies, which is confirmed by a therapist who has never heard of HIPAA. Realizing that the police are on to her, Kathy puts on a disguise and kidnaps Emma. Leah is having none of that and turns on her mother's superpowers. Suspect Leah Watts spotted by the front entrance. Miss Watts, I need to see your hands right now. That woman has my daughter. You're letting her get away. I said, let me see your hands. Stop her. I got this. Adam. Go! She evades the police and struggles with Kathy. The detective shoots Kathy dead. The movie ends with Leah and Adam, who are now back together. Emma is safe. And that is my husband's killer girlfriend. My husband's killer girlfriend. Wow, what a crazy movie. Such a ride. Leah would not win Mother of the Year. We all understand this. We all know this. She pretty much abandoned her child. But Cindy Busby, she might win Actress of the Year with this, okay? Miss Vivica A. Fox is the queen of Lifetime. We we know this. Candace is the queen of Hallmark. We know this. But Cindy, she's doing Lifetime and Hallmark, and I'm going to say she's the new queen of TV movies in general. Get her on an up TV movie, she's got it. Get her on get her on anything. I don't care. Any TV movie, she's in it. She just does such a great job 
at switching dynamics. So she can totally fall into the lifetime genre. She understands what she's doing as an actress, going for the melodrama, going for the over the top, gotta save my daughter type of stuff. She's also portrayed a villain very successfully in other Lifetime movies as well. Then she jumps over at Hallmark. She's uh, doing a, a rainbow movie where she's like chasing waterfalls. I, I have no idea, but she can be that Hallmarky, beautiful blonde, stereotypical Christmas movie girl, and then come over to Lifetime and have some fun. I'm sure she has fun in both realms, but, you know, you kind of like we kind of like doing a lifetime better, right, Cindy? Right? Cindy and I are our best friends, clearly, obviously. There's so many over-the-top things that happen in this movie that make it such a great lifetime thriller. You really have some jaw-dropping moments here. When she pulled the gun on the detective, I was like, what the hell is happening right now? I was like, what is going on? Also, we had our villain, uh, who's all in disguise and, like, totally, obviously disguised so hilarious the daughter being like a full grown-ass child pretending to be like a three-year-old one thing i didn't like was that leah ended up with her husband again at the end of the movie i really wanted her to be with that hunky ha hacker okay like let's get this going hunky hacker also gotta give props to lucia waters who is constantly playing a detective in lifetime movies and always nailing that being the detective that has a heart for the criminal she is chasing down and the criminal who is evading her at every turn. Now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. So the representation here was good, of course. We had our actors, so let's go through the list. We had Kevin, played by Hamza Fuzat, and Detective Santos, played by Lucia Waters. So again, though I did pour it up for this movie, I do have some uh, caution, 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 hello, like, Pay attention. Just want to say to the Lifetime producers out there, directors, writers, be mindful. Be mindful of the world that you're living in, okay? We had a white woman running around this movie, evading the police, pulling a gun on an officer, assaulting multiple police officers and getting away with it. Got no repercussions for any of this, nothing. And if that was a black character, uh, you know, I would be frightened for them because that's just how the world is right now, or not the world, that's how the United States is right now. It really highlighted some white privilege, you know what I'm saying? So just be mindful of that and Maybe if you're, you are working the police into your movie, think about what that is. This is 2021. You really can't escape the reality of the situation. So just either leave it out or have some consequences for their actions. And I think that wraps it up for today's episode. If you want more Lifetime Uncourt, you can find us at LifetimeUncourt.com. Don't forget to follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime Uncourt. Leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe. We have a podcast. If you haven't checked that out, it's on hiatus, but it's also called Live Demon Court. And don't forget to donate to our Kofi page. We uh, love getting donations from y'all. So thank you so much. And I think that's it. Okay, bye.